Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be building a custom Google Form page. It's going to have our own custom HTML and it's going to have our own custom styling. Just to show you that it works, this is the form that I've set up and this is the spreadsheet. If I try to send a blank document, it prompts me to fill in the email address, prompts me to fill in the name, the uh, query type and the message. When I click send, it will, although it goes to this Google form page, it will actually submit it to the um, Google spreadsheet. So let's just jump straight into the video. Okay, to begin with, I'm just going to create a new Google form. I'm going to keep it simple and call it contact form. I'm going to click the settings button at the top and click collect email addresses. I'm going to take this off. Click save. I'm then going to, we can keep this multiple choice. We can say, we can say, what is your query about? We can say uh, business or oh, let's add another option for personal I'm then gonna add another field I'm gonna drag it above this one I'm gonna just call it I'll just say name and then I'm gonna do one more I'm gonna drag it underneath oops and I'm gonna call it your message changes to paragraph I'm going to set them all to required. And I'm just going to click send. I'm going to click this button here to take a link. And I'm going to click shorten URL. I'm going to take this URL and put it into the bar. And now we've got our standard Google form. So what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to create a HTML page to mimic this page and then we can add the styling ourselves. Okay, so now that we've got our Google form set up, we're going to want to create a folder on our machine to hold the project. I've created a folder called Google Forms UI. You can name it anything you want. I'm going to drag this into my code editor. I'm using VS Code. And I'm just going to create a new file called index.html. And I'm going to create another file called style.css. So in the index.html file, I'm going to do es um, exclamation mark tab. And this is going to load up a boilerplate. And then I'm going to do link CSS. And I'm just going to call the style sheet that I've just assigned. So I'm going to start building out the HTML to contain our form. And I'm going to do this by making a form tag. And then I want to analyze our page. So I'm going to go to send. I'm going to take this link and put it into the um, URL bar. And I'm just going to inspect. And I'm just going to do command shift C and I'm going to click into the input element. And I'm just going to analyze uh, the input and I want to take the name that has been assigned. So in this case, it's called email address with a capital A. So I'm going to do a div called form element. And within here, I'm going to do a, I'll do a span. I'm going to say email address. And then I'm going to do an input type email name equals email address and placeholder equals email and I'm just going to copy this down I'm going to change it to name I'm going to do the same by doing command shift C clicking the input and I'm going to take the name which in this case is this capital um, let's see So 
So the, the name in this case is entry um, with this number. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to put that in the name field and I'm going to change this to text. So the type is text and the placeholder is name. And I'm going to do another form element and I'm going to give this a class of radio. Uh, radio hyphen buttons. And within here, I'm going to do slightly different. I'm going to give it a span. I'm going to say what is your query about. And then I'm going to do a label. And then within here, I'm going to do an input. Type equals radio. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to do Command Shift C. Click the business div. And I'm going to look down here. It's going to be a hidden input because they've got some custom um, styling. I'm going to take this name. I'm going to say name equals entry blah blah blah. And I'm going to do value equals Let's have a look. Okay, maybe we don't have to give it a value. Um, now we do. I'm sure it is capital B business. I'm also going to give it an ID of the same and in the label i'm going to give it a label of business and i'm going to give it another span called business and i'm also going to copy this i'm going to paste it i'm going to change this to personal and it will have the same name as the other radio and then i'm going to do another dot form element and I'm going to do a text area and I'm going to take the name um, which has been assigned to it so let's do command shift C click the box and the, the name is let's see so I've just done a search uh, command F I'm going to search the, the text area and I'm going to take the name, it's got this entry name. I'm going to assign it there, and I'm also going to give it a span, your message. And I'm then going to do a button, type equals submit. And I'm going to say send message. The last thing to do is to get the form action. So I'm going to search for form. I'm going to take the action. I'm going to paste it there. I'm going to do method equals post. And I'm then going to open up the project folder, double click the index file, and I'm just going to test it out. So I'm going to fill it up with some mock details. I'm going to click send. And as you can see, it submitted the form. So let's go back to the form and let's have a look. Okay, this has only come through once. This is uh, one I tested this morning. So that's working great. But of course, the HTML page is, um, well, it's not styled. So we're going to want to style this first. And then after we style it, we can actually do some error checking. Because we're going to need to handle the error checking client side. Because of course, if we left these things blank and we sent there, it would just direct the user to the standard Google form. But we're going to want to do the error checking on the form itself. Okay, so the first part of the styling, what we're going to want to do is go into the style.css sheet. And we're just going to want to include a Google font. So I'm just going to search Google fonts. And I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take this inter font. I'm going to take regular, I'm going to take, I'm going to take bold. Then I'm going to click embed and I'm going to click import. I'm going to take this, paste it at the top of the document and then do body font family and I'm going to give it the name of inter. I'm also going to do star box sizing border box. And this is essentially for the padding. So we want the padding to be inside 
of each of our HTML elements when we add there instead of outside. And I'm going to give the body a height of 100 VH. This is going to give you the height of the viewport. And I'm going to do background. I'm going to just give it a background color of triple E. And what I want to do now is bring this form into the center of the document. So to do that, let's just do display flex on the body element. To align items center and justify content center. Save that. Refresh the page and the form is now in the middle. We can also give the form a title. So let's just do H1 um, send us a message. Okay, so I want to style the form element now. So I'm going to give it a background of white. I'm going to do a padding of 60 pixels. I'm just going to give it a width of say 550 pixels, but a max width of calc. So it's going to calculate 100% of the width minus 60 pixels. So it will never ever go past this width. So we've always got that padding on the side. I then also want to target the form elements. So I'm going to take this class name dot form element. I'm going to do display flex. And I'm going to do flex direction column. So that's going to bring the items down like that. And I'm just going to do margin bottom of 30 pixels. And I'm going to just give the span. So I'm going to do form element span. Margin bottom of 10 pixels. So that's given us a little bit of um, distance there. And now I'm going to style the um, inputs. So I just want to do input comma text area. And I'm going to do border one pixel solid and I'm just going to go back to the browser. I'm going to inspect and I'm just going to try out something on the actual page to see what looks good. So if I click this input, I could do border one pixel solid. That looks a bit too light. So maybe we can give it a lighter sort of bluey color. And I do line height two, padding five pixels and border radius five pixels. I'm just going to paste that within here. So that looks slightly better. Um, yeah, so now we just want to, maybe we can change it. So these, um, select, now we can actually go back into the HTML and we can move the inputs before the span. And I now want to target this radio buttons div. And I want to do label, I'm sorry, label. So we want to add some style to the label and do margin bottom 10 pixels just to give some separation there. And I just want to do cursor pointer. And I'm now going to style the button at the bottom so we can actually do dot form. Now we can actually do form button. We can do width 100%, padding 20 pixels, color white. And let's inspect it and let's add a color to it. So we can do background red and let's just change this to a nice uh, blue color. Do border radius 5 pixels and border none. And let's give the font size of 18 pixels. 
Of course, you could make this um, look a lot better. This is just of purpose. Uh, this I'm just doing this to show you how I would go about doing it. So let's just test that everything still works. Let's go back to the form. And as you can see, it's all coming through. Okay, and now for the error check-in, because of course, earlier on, if we clicked send, we could send, um, basically submit the form without even having any data in the fields, which was causing it to um, sort of give the error on the Google Docs document. It's quite straightforward with HTML5. That's all we really need to do is on each of the elements, add a required tag. So we're gonna do that on the email field, do it on the name field. And then we've got these um, radio boxes. If we just do required on one, that should be enough and we can do required on the text area too. I'm going to save that. I'm now going to hit, I'm just going to add a um, cursor pointer to that. If we click the send button, it's going to prompt us to filling the email field. And it's actually going to, because we give it a type of email in the HTML, it's going to actually like look for an email address and if it doesn't it's going to show us another area error so i'm going to do adam at adam the dev .com. i'm going to try to send it it's asking us for the next field so i'm going to give it and then i'm going to hit send and it's asking us to select one of these options so i'm going to give it to the personal because we haven't got required on there and it still works which is great and i'm going to say this is another message I'm going to hit send and there we go it sends the form and it's error checked for us of course we could do some more advanced error checking with javascript but in this scenario it's not really necessary and i think for most of the scenarios you're going to be using google forms for you're not going to be needing any advanced validation but yeah that's um, more or less it if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and feel free to hit subscribe for more videos like this soon